Hello, my name is Jay Walter and this is Rebuilding. Oliver Wendell Holmes said a mind that is stretched by a new experience can never go back to its old dimensions. So let's stretch our minds, find answers to problems, overcome fears, and rebuild our first kingdom. Hello everyone and thank you for listening to Rebuilding today. Um, I've got another hopefully good show for you. I'm uh, trying this without guests, um, and it's been hard. You know, they say you need to imagine that you're talking to someone, so um, I've tried that at home alone in my studio, and it's hard to imagine when there's nobody there. So today I'm I'm talking to you from the, the King's studio with my uh, producer, Brad Newfeld, and uh, we're we're trying this out, see if... See if Jay can get the hang of this, doing this thing by himself. But uh, today, this well, this last week, um, some things have been, some things have happened, and uh, um, some thoughts have come to my mind that I wanted to talk about today. And most of it has to do with Kingdom Three. And uh, we had a a friend um, who's I was moving into my kingdom three as I got to know him better, who actually took his own life last week. And I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about this. One of our our other kings, Michael Sheen, uh, wrote a piece on Facebook that I want to read. And sometimes the things on Facebook turn into beautiful prose that that you really don't understand how... um, how something in a, a platform like that can turn out to be so heartfelt. But what he wrote is, a man killed himself the other day. Oh, how sad. Did he have a family? I would usually ask when someone delivered this all too frequent news. But this one was different. This man I knew. His name was Jeremy. I am sad to say I, I didn't know him as well as I would have liked. I always thought he could be a good friend. We belonged to the same group that served other men. He was a leader and a great example to all. He lifted everyone he met. His smile was infectious. I met his wife at one event. They were a perfect match. Handsome with beautiful, happy and healthy. He was a father. I met his son. He had three other kids, but I didn't know that until I saw it on Facebook. He drove a nice truck, and he had a boat. He golfed a lot. I knew he did something in construction, but we never talked about it. I would describe him as a man's man. He was present at every event we held, except for a recent meeting when he sent his regrets because it was his wife's birthday. Picture perfect life. And now he's dead. He always asked everyone how they were doing, and he listened intently while they shared. I don't remember asking him how he was doing. I mean, like, really asking. It was obvious that he was great, at least I thought so. I don't know what happened or what went through his head to make him think this was a good idea. I suppose I never will. What I do know is that I didn't ask. I did slap him on the back as he talked about his latest golf trip. We talked at length about the men in his small mastermind group and how they were doing. We talked about all the effort he was putting into pulling everyone out of their isolation. We talked about him taking on bigger leadership roles with our men's group, but we never talked about him. I work with dozens of men, and I'm a good listener. I ask tough questions that others shy away from. I have made a difference in many lives because I care. I am committed more than ever to be the hand for my brothers reaching through the dark. But with Jeremy, I didn't ask. I'm not trying to say that I could have said something that would have prevented this tragedy, but there are so many of you that I am much closer to that I can make a difference with. And there are those in your life that you can make a difference with. On the flip side, when I ask you how you're doing, like really ask you, please just tell me the truth. I promise to do the same. Now, this really struck me, both the uh, 
the young man taking his own life and the response from Michael and others in our group, how, how deeply this touched us all. How this young man, we thought, had it all. He had it all together. He was the one we thought, oh, he's, he's doing okay. He is a, a, an example for us. But did anybody ask? Did anybody talk to him? Did anybody ask that deep question and, and expect that answer of him? Do we, as we sit across the table from each other in our group and with each other and, and our friends, do we, do we really want to know how we're doing? Do we really want to tell other people those dark, dark things we hold in our soul, the things that we isolate from others for? Do we really want to help other people? I think that is, to me, the definition of true friendship. Otherwise, they're just associates. They're just people we know. Now, I've made a commitment to myself to those, to, to make those in my group of who I call friends, true friends, the people that I want to talk to, I want to ask that hard question, how are you really doing? And like Michael, I want that true answer. I want you to reach down deep. If things are going bad, let me know. If there's something I can do, let me know. I may not have all the answers, but maybe... Maybe I know someone who might help. Or maybe we can just talk. Now, I've, I've lost two brothers in my life um, in unexpected accidents. And I think those hit almost as hard as this with Jeremy. It's just these unexpected, the, the, the taking of, of a life or the loss of a life um, in an unexpected way just seems to be so much more of a deep loss in my life. But, you know, we, we sometimes I think we get so afraid to get close to people because we know we're going to lose them. But I think that as I listen to other people talking and as I listen and learn about how really we can live a more magnified life, that having those people and feeling that loss is just a part of life that we really need to have. Because if you don't know another person and, they, and you lose them, you, it's almost like you have an, ex, an ex, extra loss because you think of all the things you could have maybe learned from that person all the things that could have come about in your life, the, the growth you could have had, the, the fun, the, the knowledge, the joy that you could have experienced with that person is now gone because you didn't make the effort. So how, the question is then, how do we step out of our own shells? How do we step out of our own selves and get out of our own way and make those connections? And that's the hard question. How do you go about making that step towards true, deep connections and friendships? And I think it's, it's developing that true connection with our source or our divinity so that we can love ourselves and fill our own cup so that we can fill others. I know this kind of sounds disjointed, but these feelings have been coming all this week, and it's, it's trying to put them, put them all into words, and I, I don't know that I have all the answers. Um, I don't know that I, I have been very successful at making friends my whole life until later in life, and I'm just really kind of learning how to do all this. So I guess for the friends that I know that, are hearing this, I'm asking you to maybe help me step out of my shell. Come to me and talk to me and let's really learn about each other. Let's really learn how we can be effective friends, how we 
can be there for each other and really know and trust that the people that we're, we're befriending and the, the people around us, that we can go to them when we're having hard times. One of the things I, when I read this from Michael, I'm, a, I'm kind of afraid to say that I actually had thoughts about what if I were gone tomorrow? Would people say those same things about me? What if I were to take my life? Would many people stand up and, and would they have a tear in their eye because I was gone? And I really had to push. They, they kind of became a dark thought, kind of pushing me towards, you know, maybe that's not a bad idea. And I, I had to work it through and, and real, re, really realize where those thoughts were coming from and the dark place that they could lead me to. And I found my way out by talking to my friends. I opened up and I, I shared that. I told them, you know, what if it was me? Would I be missed? And how I had to come through and, and talk through and get those thoughts out of my mind. So that's, um, that's one step I think we need to take. We all need to take. Go to our friends. Really make contact with them. Who, who in your list of friends are you going to make a commitment to talk to this week or next week? And then take that intention and put it into action. I think that's the biggest part. We all intend to be, you know, oh, I intended to call Jay when he when I thought about him but you know I got too busy well let's let's take that intention and put it into action well let's take a, a quick break here and uh, then I can collect my thoughts maybe for another part of this this podcast so uh, I'll talk to you in a few minutes Listening to Five Kingdoms Radio, where we inspire you to organize and align your life so that you can build a better you, a better family, and become a better friend and associate so that you can ultimately bless the world. If these are your goals and you want to help us build this life changing network, we invite you to become a sponsor or advertise on our station. For more information on this amazing opportunity, please contact us at fivekingdomsradio.com. Some people are born smart or beautiful. I was born electric. My name is Michael Bay. The Elgin Corporation created me. And now they're trying to destroy me. I've got friends that can shoot lightning. Create an EMP. Create light. I'm getting more powerful every day. Which brings me to my question. How much electric am I going to get before I am no longer human? Welcome back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed those, and and what we've been talking about today is kind of deep. So, um, the next question I have is, where do we go from here? What do we do now? 
Um, and that's what I've been been struggling with is, is, as I said before, how do I make those connections? So we start, I think, um, I don't know how many have heard of Circles of Influence, where where you personally or know people that have that you have an influence over. So as you as you ponder these things, think about who in your family, your second kingdom, um, you haven't connected with in a while. You know, you got children that are out of the house and they're out on their own, or or aunts and uncles, cousins, thing people that that you have been in the past close to, but maybe haven't talked to in a while. Now, you may then, um, like I said before, we have those these intentions. I intend to talk to my cousin. I intend to talk to my brother. But how do we move that intention to action? I think that's the, that's the biggest thing I worry about is that I will come to a day when I will look back and I intended to do all these great things. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm sitting here recording these things is I had this intention of being a uh, an influencer or an intention of of helping people understand things. I finally got the courage. I finally got faced the fear, and now I'm sitting here talking into a microphone, and hopefully somebody is on the other side listening. And so I've turned that intention to action. And one of those things I did was start writing it down. Uh, there's some, many scientific studies showing that there is a link in your brain that is created when you use your hand to put pencil to paper or pen to paper to write things down. That when you write down your goals, when you write down your intentions, um, that there is a connection made in your brain that, that will help you turn that intention into action. And one of the wonderful things that I've been using, we have this tool, the Kingdom Organizer, that the Kingdom Organizer helps me to align my all of my kingdoms. So I can say, in my kingdom too, who in my family do I need to make a connection with today? Now, I, we had a, a challenge one time to just send an emoji or send a text to each of our kids. And I tried that one week, and uh, a lot of the responses were back were, is there something wrong, Dad? Why are you, why are you sending me this, this message? And I just reply that I'm just wondering how they're doing and want them to let them know I'm thinking about them. And my youngest daughter said it, she needed that that day. That she needed to know she's she's off in the Air Force and overseas right now, and and she needed to have that connection from her dad. So, who in your family have you not connected with? Have you not asked that question? How are you? How are you doing, really? And maybe sit down when you have a moment and think about it this week as you're planning your day or you're planning your week. Uh, or as you start to do things like that, then you write down, who in my family do I need to connect with this week? Who in my family do I need to connect with today? Maybe say a little prayer in your heart. Ask for some inspiration. Who, higher power, for a better word, um, who do I need to connect with? Who needs my help today? Who needs to hear my voice who needs to see my text and write it down? When it's written down and it's there on a piece of paper, it's calling back at you. Have you done this yet? Have you done this yet? It's kind of like the, you know your kids in the backseat of the car. Are you there yet? Well, have you done this yet? Write it down. Who are your friends? Do you need to connect this with this week? Who haven't you seen? You used to live next to him, next door to him, you know, years and years ago, but you haven't talked to him in ten years. Write it down. Make that intention become an action. And as you 
make these intentions, as you contact these people, as you become reacquainted with people that you knew years ago, your circle of influence tends to grow. And as that influence grows, then you can touch the lives of more people. And you can affect the lives of more people around you. So the big thing that I've taken away from this whole experience is that I need to get in to my organizer more often. I need to get in and write down who in my family I need to keep to connect with this week. I've been better. I've been trying to text every week one of my kids and just ask them how they're doing. I need to get better at doing that with my friends. And who do I need to connect with in my friends? And who in my associates, who people I work with, people I kind of know on that periphery, maybe I need to get to know some of those better so that they become uh, moved into my circle of friends, into that circle of influence. And maybe those, those contacts, those, those associates that I, I get to know better, Maybe they'll influence me. They'll have something that I need to know, something that I need to be better at that they can teach me. So as we grow our circle of influence, maybe we grow ourselves. Um, we, can be, we can become better at who we are and who we want to be and maybe learn something that, that maybe we've been afraid to uh, ask about. Or maybe we've been afraid to approach doing. Um, that's, that's the experience I've had. Is when I've wanted to do these kind of things, as I've wanted to record and as I've wanted to reach out and touch people, I've met people around me that have helped me overcome those fears, overcome the obstacles, and move forward. And, and I've seen changes in my life that I never thought I would ever have. And I probably could never have done it just on my own. We, um, we think we're individuals and we can live lone lives. We can do everything we need to do on our own. But as, as I've gained more and more experience through the years, that never really happens well. You're doing things on your own. You relearn the lessons that others have learned and could have taught you so much more easy. It could have been a lot easier to get beyond the steps that you're, you're at. So let's take up one more little break here today and then uh, we'll, we'll go into a final wrap-up session and, uh, and uh, finish this, this show for today. My name is Alan Christofferson. You don't know me. Just another book in the library, my father would say, unopened and unread. You have no idea how far I've come or what I've lost. More important, you have no idea what I've found. I'm no one important or famous. No matter. It's better to be loved by one person who knows your soul than millions who don't even know your phone number. I have loved and been loved as deeply as a man can hope for, which makes me a lucky man. It also means that I have suffered. Life has taught me that in order to fly, you must first accept the possibility of falling. I don't know if anyone will ever read what I'm writing, but if you're holding this book, then you've found my story. That makes you my fellow sojourner. If you find something in my journey that will help you with yours, keep it. Some might call this a love story. Those without love will call it a travelogue. To me, it's one man's journey to find hope. There are things that happened to me that you might not believe. There were lessons learned that you might not be ready for. No matter. Accept or dismiss what you will. But let me warn you in advance, which is more than I got, that what you read won't be easy, but it's a story worth telling. It's the story of my walk.
Sometimes what we want most in life is just a second chance to do what we should have done to begin with. I'm author Richard Paul Evans. The Road Home, the long-awaited final book in the best-selling Broken Road trilogy, is now on sale. The Broken Road is a story of hope and redemption. It's about a man walking Route 66 back to the only woman he has ever loved, hoping that she might take him back. If you haven't started the Broken Road trilogy, you can now read all three books without waiting. The Road Home, now on sale wherever books are sold, just in time for Mother's Day. Hello, my friends. This is Brad Newfeld, host of the Five Kingdoms radio show right here on the Tribe of Kings Information Network. Be sure and tune in weekly to hear the latest and greatest on the Tribe of Kings and also to learn all those things that you need to do to be the best that you can be. Welcome back to our final segment of the show today. Um, I really appreciate uh, anybody who's listened to this point and and, um, hopefully you're taking some action today or this coming week to to make a connection in your life. Now, I don't know um, if this this is the holiday season kind of speaking. It's it's approaching Christmas time when this is being recorded and and maybe that's making me think more about our fa- my family and, and the connections that I have with them. And I think that's a natural part of, of everyone this time of year. We always give more. We, uh, we donate more to people around us. We, we want to make sure our neighbors are doing all right. But we need to carry this spirit, this spirit of giving, the spirit of love that we feel at this time of year throughout the rest of the year. And I think that uh, as we really concentrate on our connections, as we really think every day, as we, we plan out our days, as we plan out our weeks about who we want to connect with, we really can carry this spirit of love, this spirit of connection with us through the entire year. And that will, I, I promise that that will help you live a happier life as, as you make those connections, as you... Write down those people and you, and you take the effort, you make the effort to make those connections and to talk to people and really get to know and reconnect with people that maybe you have, have lost track with. That, that really that in our life, having those connections, having that friendship, having that love between one another, that Agape, I think, is what is the the love of friends, the 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 non romantic love, really can affect our hearts in a way that that allows us to share more of ourselves, allows us to really care about those people around us, and know um, what they're feeling, and help them in times of need. That that person that maybe is is having a hard time with their family or their children or or their spouse or whatever that that we can make those connections to help them reconnect with their own family and those around them that that, that may have be having difficulty with we hear stories all the time here um with the kingdom organizer and with the kings of of families being reconnected of children who had been lost or, or disowned or had gone away from the family, how they've come back because the, the father has made the effort to just reach out to them and change his own life so that that, that child would see that there is a difference, that they've changed, that they've made the effort to be a better person. And all of us can use that. All of us need to work every day to be better people. And as we do that, we can make those connections and people will know that we're being genuine with them, that we really are trying to be a better friend, a better father, a better husband, a better mother, a better brother, sister, that we really are making that effort to connect and to love and to share ourselves. 
and just want you to remember that if you're feeling that way, if you're feeling like you have no reason to be here, that nobody cares whether you're here or not, I want you to remember that there is someone out there who cares. Someone, somewhere, will miss you. Someone, somewhere, will feel a great loss if you are not in their life. So, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling like you have no reason to be, reach out. You will be amazed by the reaction you'll get. Yeah, it may not always be positive, but there is someone there that will want you to be in their life, that will want you to make, uh, make the effort, and they will return that effort. So always remember that you are important to someone else. So as, as we, we talk about writing things down, that's the one thing I've always ended the show with is a goal or a dream written down with a date is a goal. And a goal achieved is a dream come true. So let's make our dreams come true this holiday season. Let's set some goals to connect with family, with friends, with those around us, so that we can have our dreams come true for this Christmas season and throughout the rest of next year as we go into 2020. Let's see some big dreams come true. And thanks again for listening. This is Jay Walter with Rebuilding. As always, thank you for listening to Rebuilding. I hope that you have heard something today that will help you on your path to rebuilding your life. Something resonated. If you felt a call to action, please take that action and rebuild. Let me know what you think of today's show or any of my shows. You can leave comments at rebuilding.podbean.com or email at j at jwalter.com. I would love to hear from you. Comments, suggestions, and topics that you would like me to cover are always welcome. Remember, a dream written down with a deadline is a goal, and a goal achieved is a dream come true. Until next time, I am Jay Walter, and I am always rebuilding.